Good morning, everyone. Having a case of the heat flashes. <laughs> the vanilla soy milk on your cornflakes. Nope, we didn't scare you off. <laughs> Mommy, these people on TV. <laughs> hey, there is no pool, there is no water park, no aquatic center, just some slip and slides at homes. So I just love that tongue. <laughs> Got a lazy is, tongue, right? just like Keith. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm stunned. <laughs> I got nothing. You're, you're going to be going by sea licious. <laughs> I'm going to play you to break. <laughs> I don't like that. I will not be living in Japan. So you eat spam? I don't say no. I mean, it's it's a food. It's, it is. It is a food. I, I, uh, get, I think that's debatable. <laughs> They've got a nude attitude in San Clemente, California. Nudists want to bear it all at the beach. Apparently just <laughs> really unhappy with some calls the refs were making. That manager got ejected. Because you don't put your armpit in anybody's face, and you definitely don't put your chew on the artificial turf. And I got a case of the crazies <laughs> going on. Like, yeah, I want you to impale me. Timber. You can just hear somebody yelling that. I'll bet you like five people did when that was going down. Bet you never guessed technical difficulties meant Mike would be doing the weather. The reason why we have so much clearness, if that's even a word, is because of all this clearness. It's keeping us clear in the nest over here. Also wearing jeans, by the way. All right, well, coming up, if they don't get pinched, they'll get pricked. Yeah, the answer to the question we've all lost sleep over, who steals a cactus? And happening today, a teen accused of partnering up with a friend to murder his own mom and sister will be in court today. Donald Shacklin was 15 when it happened just days before Christmas last year, but we are still waiting to find out if he'll be tried as an adult. Josh Tucker pleaded guilty to the stabbings. Cops over on the west side arrested a mom holding her on manslaughter charges. Investigators found her one day old baby dead in her Lacey home. A coroner ruled that child was born alive. And also happening today, the sent sentencing trial for killer Joseph Duncan continues in Boise. It took more than an hour. Duncan, acting as his own lawyer, took only about two minutes. Duncan murdered three members of a North Idaho family before kidnapping and torturing Shasta and Dylan Groney, later killing Dylan. The trial could last weeks. We don't have word, but would not be surprised if there's some more statewide weeding going on today. Cops grabbed another few thousand pot plants in Grandview. The rural investigators say they found about 5,000 plants inside this Grandview garage and out in the field. Most were already harvested. Five people were arrested. Not clear, though, if the property owner had anything to do with it. New this morning, Russian troops are hightailing it out of the Georgian city of Gori. Meantime, the U.S. making it clear where it stands on the conflict. President Bush insisted Russia end all of its military activities in the ex-Soviet Republic. Secretary of State Condi Rice is in the region to help find a solution. Also this morning, police in Little Rock, Arkansas, say the man who killed a Democratic Party official had no criminal record, and they're not sure why that man burst into the office, but some of his friends say he was just fired from a Target store. He died in a shootout with police. Well, the worst of fire season is still ahead for California, but blazes are already scorching the state's budget. Close to 300 million spent in the last six weeks alone. Spicy spy Julia Child, yes, the Julia Child was a spy. So were some Roosevelt's, Supreme Court Justice, and a White Sox catcher, Mo Bird. They all worked in international ring coordinated by the U.S. during World War II. 24,000 spies now being named since the National Archives released three quarters of a million pages of documents. All right, well, coming up, if they don't get pinched, they'll get pricked. Yeah, the answer to the question we've all lost sleep over, who steals a cactus? And you just might be surprised how much these things are worth and how many people really are stealing them. And so why they're going to start planting microchips in them. It's an amazing story. It's coming up. It's 540 on your Thursday morning. You're watching Action News. All right, Troy, in your health alert this morning, we're not boozing it up like we used to. A new study shows younger Americans, it's kind of surprising, do not drink as much as generations before them. The amount of hard liquor we chug hasn't changed, but beer and wine drinkage has declined. Bad reactions to antibiotics put a lot of people in the ER. The government claims it leads to about 150,000 visits, most of it because of allergies, the rest of it 
errors and overdoses, the feds want doctors to eh, be a little more careful. And zapping cancer could wipe it out. New radiation techniques can kill the stuff if it's spread to other parts of the body. In trials, 20% of patients saw the therapy stop all tumors. Police call them target crimes, and really, in most cases, it doesn't add up to much more than a headache for you. Crooks see your garage door open, they take a bike. You walk away from a shopping cart, they take your cell phone. So I got in touch with Kenwick Police to walk a parking lot with an officer to see just how many of us leave an open opportunity for these thieves. I mean, people love to see at least. Yeah, we lost another Honda Civic yesterday. It didn't take long before Sergeant Ken Latin and I found exactly what any crook would be looking for, even here, of all places, outside the Benton County Justice Center. We're talking about half the vehicles that the thieves break into are unlocked. We had two just yesterday. Out of a few dozen parked cars. That's an easy one to reach in. We spotted tons of temptation for any thief. There he goes, a stereo. Car stereo's taken, a uh, cell phone taken. In one case, a handgun was taken out of a car. Where's your common sense? You're leaving a handgun in a car, unlocked? Sergeant Latin told me they'll take anything, cigarettes, CDs, even loose chains. It may seem like, why would anybody do go through all this, commit a crime for 10 or 15 bucks, but they'll do it, because they do it every day. And yeah. in the end, you could be out, maybe a power window, maybe some door locks, maybe even an entire window, just for that $15 worth of CDs. Yes plus all the inconvenience of getting your car fixed. When we got done talking to the sergeant, one of my colleagues pulled up in an Action News car. I wanted to make sure she was doing the right thing. Check the car doors. They are locked, but I went around back and the trunk is wide open. So I could have had my pick of makeup or even some camera equipment. How did you uh, get into my car? Uh, the trunk was wide open. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. She really shouldn't feel bad. Even the sergeant admits he's left a window open or door unlocked. And even if you do make it easy for the crook, the cops still have your back. We do like to make arrests. We do like to hold people accountable. Are you but able to with these types of crimes? We are. We do get a, occasionally we get a fingerprint hit um, and we're able to make an arrest based on that. Well, police admit you cannot stop every crime, but you can protect yourself, and their tip is simple. Shut it, lock it, leave it out of sight. And any time you think someone's acting shady around cars or homes, Sergeant Latin told me don't hesitate to give him a call. Well, the horse heaven hills needs water. Lord, won't you send some this way? After all these years, he's still sitting on his portable porch on the back end of the truck he calls Maybell, rain today. strumming and singing, even though Don Omen didn't give himself much hope to make music again after a stroke a few years back. water in them walleye gills, but not in the horse heaven hills. Creative juices kind of go bye-bye when you have one of these strokes. I was about ready to give her up. I said, nope, I'm done. I won't ever be able to play again. Obviously, he wasn't done, and now in his 60s, he might just be playing and singing better than before. I can't get that high. <laughs> with his family by his side and a strong dose of willpower, along with some hard work, Don made a Hollywood comeback, taking his talent all the way to Hollywood, California. I was on the stage, the same stage that they have the Miss Universe pageant. And on that stage, singing in the World Championship of Performing Arts with artists from 50 different countries. He took home the silver for a gospel song and gold for a sound so unique, he says the Smithsonian didn't even know what to call it. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is start a brand new category. You start a brand new category, start construction folk music, and you're the first one in it. And I thought, boy, that's pretty neat. Well, my dad is a roofer and my brother is a roofer and they have one heck of a time. He's still proud of his roofing song, the one that took home the gold, the one that got him through some hot days working construction. Now early in the morning, just at the crack of dawn. And a stroke that didn't end his days, only made him something more to live for. Runs to the pot, pulls the buckets up in record time. Something even the singing roofer can't believe. He goes by the name of Little Lou. There should be two of me, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed too much to have all this happiness. <laughs> well, my wife is a roofer, and my son is a roofer, and they have one heck of a time. Donnie runs a kettle.